Hello, Texans, and welcome to the Coach Cully Show. Mark Vandermeer, John Harris with you, joined by head coach David Cully. Coach, congratulations on the win. That was a phenomenal performance by your team, top to bottom, the whole organization. How do you feel about the way everything came together for you, putting together that kind of game plan and seeing it executed? Well, you just said the right thing. This entire organization last week, from top to bottom, with everything that was going on with COVID, all the things we had to deal with, we're trying to decide – uh, what players will be available, what players won't be available. Our training staff, man, our, our equipment, everybody did such a tremendous job of making sure that none of this was a distraction or a disruption to our football team. And uh, the organization, everybody did a great job of that. And it allowed this football team to go out and practice with the guys that whoever we're going to have the practice to go out and be able to focus on winning the football game and doing the things that we needed to do and did a phenomenal job of that. Coach, it felt like there were so many, like there was like not one area where you could go, well, this area is set because even, even your kicking game, you've got to bring in a new kicker who's never kicked in the NFL. You're starting a defensive lineman in mm-hmm. Michael Dwumfor who had never put on a uniform for a regular season game. In these situations, there's always been one thing you could sort of count on, but it felt like there was nothing. There was sort of upheaval in every single category. We talked about this, Mark and I have, and coach, I know you've probably had you know bigger wins, playoff wins, et cetera. But this win felt different. Even for Mark and I, we talked about it. Did this win feel different for you because of how it came about with all the different things that came into it and how everybody seemed to participate in it and get involved in the win? Well, you just said the the magic words right there. Everybody involved. This was, at this point of the season, by far the most complete game, offensively, defensively, and special teams that we played. And everybody that was on that field yesterday that participated in that game, that was on the sideline, had a part in doing what happened to us yesterday. And, and it's, it, it goes back to that next man mentality deal, everybody stepping up. Uh, nobody better than I. And that goes back to the veterans on this football team. A lot of those guys weren't on the field yesterday, but we felt their presence. Those guys that were playing understood what was expected of them. And they went out and and uh, all three phases played the game the way the game's supposed to be played. And the results yesterday ended up being in our favor because we played the game the right way. Coach, we know that the last couple of weeks have been a major challenge, but you've also been unable to meet in person. You've practiced in person, but unable to meet in person. You have all these zoom calls and breaking in so many new players. What does that tell you about the way this is done and the performance that you put together the last couple of weeks, breaking in all these new guys? Well, it goes back Mark to the focus and concentration that these guys have had. Uh, A lot of these guys that are new right now for us, haven't had to go through the, the uh, Zoom process that we went through last year in this league. But uh, again, uh, it is what it is right now. We have to deal with it. Uh, we've dealt with it before as, uh, as a football team uh, all across the league. But our players, the focus and concentration and not allowing these things to disrupt or distract what our goal was, was major in, uh, in this football team being able to do what it did yesterday. Coach, Mark and I were talking about this morning. There were six rookies yesterday that started or played a a significant amount during the game, and all six ended up making big-time contributions, starting with Davis all the way through Jimmy, who played center. When you have rookies at the end of the year that are growing the way that your guys are, that they're maturing the way that these guys have, how much does that, from a coaching perspective, kind of give you, I don't want to say joy, but satisfaction that there are some young players that are adhering to the coaching that are taking in the teaching and then putting that into work out on the field. Well, the first thing I got to go to uh, Nick and our scouting department, because listen, those six guys you talked about, those rookies and those guys hadn't played a much. I mean, those are the right guys. We've got the right guys on this football team. Uh, We've identified those guys and those guys right now have been put in a situation to be able to go out and play and they've done a heck of a job for us of doing what we feel like they need to do in order for us to be successful. And they're growing that way. They're getting better and better. We're nowhere near we need where we need to be or where we're going to be. 
But I tell you what, those guys are doing a heck of a job. And again, that goes back to a credit to our veteran leadership that we got on this football team. Those guys that are playing right now that hadn't been playing very much have seen how it's supposed to be done and how you prepare, how you stay focused, how you not let outside forces interfere with what's going on. And, and you could tell by yesterday the way they played that they, they hasn't allowed that to happen. Early on, Coach, you see that you're getting some cracks of daylight in the ground game. It's working on that opening drive, and, and Mills looks good too, but being able to move the football on the ground the way you did yesterday, and it kind of got better as the day went along. Your thoughts on that? Well, we've been trying to get, make sure that that happens all year long. Uh, yesterday, I thought our offensive line, uh, actually the last two weeks, our offensive line, our tight ends, that up front group has done a heck of a job of getting a hat on a hat. We talk about that all the time, about getting a hat on a hat, getting our backs, regardless of who it is, carrying the ball to the line of scrimmage and securing a good pocket for David to be able to make good decisions. And they've done a tremendous job of that the last two weeks. And basically, when you do that, you're able to be able to consistently do what you need to do offensively. And because of that, yesterday we were able to run it when we needed to run it. We were able to throw it when we needed to throw it. And we were very successful doing both yesterday. Coach. After the game, when you were talking to the team, you mentioned the defense scoring a touchdown. And you you talked about that. And I got a feeling that might have been a focus, like, hey, defense, the offense has gotten some, even special teams got one. But how about a defense? Let's go get one. And then they did. And I said it to you last week, you know, it was a weird game in the sense that, and you talk about this a lot, if you win the takeaway battle, you're going to win the game. But you didn't in Jacksonville. You still won the game by two touchdowns. Yesterday, you did win the takeaway battle. And not only that, you took one to the house and scored. A, how important was it for the defense to get a score? And B, where did that sort of uh, excitement for them getting a touchdown sort of come from? Well, you know, there was a little pressure on them now. You know, after our special team scored uh, last week. So, yeah. Well, I, we kind of put a little heat on them to do that. And, you know, <laughs> they've been getting a bunch of turnovers all year long. And and we've been close on some of those uh, returns. And, uh uh, yesterday it happened. I'll tell you the good thing about what happened yesterday. What people forget is I, don't, I believe this is correct. That football team that we played yesterday did not punt yesterday. Mm -hmm. So when you think about yeah. it, those three, those three turnovers that we got, we end up getting points off of all of those turnovers. And that was critical. And then yeah. getting that touchdown was basically just the icing on the cake. Uh, you know, I'm glad he got the touchdown, John and Mark but I would have liked to have seen him just go down because the game was over at that point. But I, I kind of feel like that might've been my fault because I put so much pressure on them to be able to score a touchdown that I'm talking about. I think when he caught that ball, he must've heard me choking in his ear about defense, not scoring a touchdown, but those guys did a heck of a job yesterday of doing that. And I, I, I was just so happy for it. But again, we've been getting takeaways all year long and eventually you keep doing that. You keep eliminating the big plays. Those kind of things happen. Coach, we talk all the time about wins and losses, and that's what it's all about. But as a coach, when you see a young man get an opportunity and make the most of it, like Jonathan Owens, for instance, and he starts last week, yesterday he has the pick, yesterday is a fumble recovery. When you see that as a coach, as a teacher, really, it's got to really make you smile. It does. And, and let me tell you what that tells you too, Mark. That tells you that those guys have been listening. That tells you that those guys understand that when your time comes, you step in and there is no drop off. You want to go in and you do, do what those guys that have been you going in to start for have been doing. And, and, and basically that's just a credit to our coaching staff uh, that those guys, I think Greg and Dino in the secondary has done a great job. We've had a bunch of moving parts all year long with those group and they've done a tremendous job of keeping that thing together. And, and those guys being able to come together at the right time of the year. Coach, I've talked to football players and coaches at, uh, at all levels, uh, everywhere. And you ask guys, especially that played the game, and you mentioned kickers, and they just go, oh, kickers, man. They're just a different – they're a different breed. You have the ball on a 33, 34-yard line, and you trot Dominic out there to kick a 51-yarder. I think it was the first field goal attempt of his career. What are you thinking at that point about, oh, my gosh, this is his first field goal attempt? What, what were you kind of thinking about at that point about Everly going out on the field for the very first time to kick that field goal. Well, let me tell you how much confidence I had in him and, and Frank in making that decision to do that. He hit every field goal that we tried this week in practice. Mm, so yeah. that gave me, uh, I, I remember that 
Now, yeah. had he missed a few of those, I might have been a little bit of hesitant about that. <laughs> but yeah. plus, on the sideline, he didn't even blink, Mark and John. I mean, I'm talking about when it was time for him to trot out there, he trotted out there like, hey, look, I got this. And obviously, he did a nice job of doing that. And he made all of his extra points also. Coach, in the second quarter, the sequence of Owens pick, and then you're pinned back deep, but you get the defensive holding penalty on them. And it's not like it's a 15 yarder and you're out of jail. You're still pinned back really deep to be able to throw it to door set the way you did to set up something close to midfield and eventually score with the TD pass to Conley, a huge sequence of events right there. Your thoughts. Well, that, again, I thought Tim and our offensive staff did a great job of being able to understand that once we got that penalty uh, and it kind of kept the drive going, like you said, it wasn't a big penalty, but, we felt good at that point, Mark, about what we were doing offensively. And we knew at that time, that was a time that they gave us the coverage that we needed to get. And, and Tim made the call and uh, offense executed the play. And it was a huge play for us getting us out of that. And then going on later on and being able to get the touchdown. That interception and scoring right before halftime right there were two big, big plays for us in that ball game. Momentum changers. Coach, what are you seeing in the confidence of Davis Mills each time he goes on the field? Well, the thing about it is that he understands each week that there's always things that we can do to get better. Uh, just like this week, there's things that we, he can do to get get better with. And, and basically, uh, our offense has obviously starting to come together, starting to get some continuity. And, and part of that is him being able to make good decisions and him being able to protect the ball. And when you do that first, Everything else falls into place, and he's doing a good job of doing that, did a nice job of doing that yesterday, did a nice job of, of helping us get in the end zone uh, when we needed to get points. Uh, and I think two, the two things right there, you talk about field position and complementary football. We had a score with, off the two-minute, and we had a score off of a four-minute. That's the way you end two-minute, and that's the way you end four-minute with a score. And that's a credit to our offense uh, allowing us to be able to do those kind of things, our offensive front. Coach, it seems like Mills is just – he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low, that kind of personality, almost like a really good professional golfer or something like that. I don't know how to describe it, his demeanor. And how helpful has that been? Because he's lived through some tough times. You've had some big losses at Indy, at Arizona. He played in those games. What do you think he learned from those experiences that he's able to take to the table now and really flourish? Well, I think a big part of that is, too, is him learning from Tyrod. Tyrod's kind of got that same kind of demeanor. I mean, you know, they don't ever get, he doesn't ever get too high, too low. Things are always, always feel like you're in control. And, and, and Davis has kind of seen how that works and how that keeps the offense, uh, uh, obviously the confidence up. And, and he's done a really good job of that. I think the really big thing about him is right now is what his confidence is, is that he's feeling more comfortable in what we're doing offensively. Um, uh, he's, he's actually doing the things that he knows that our quarterback needs to do and he knows the plan and he's following the plan and, and our, our offense is starting to come together. And, and, and when you do that, uh, good things happen. Coach, I, I'm sure you've looked at the film from last night and there's six days until San Francisco, but I know you get a, a little bit of a head start on the 49ers, your thoughts about. Jimmy Garoppolo and the bunch, they played Thursday. They lost to the Titans, a place where you've won. What are your thoughts initially about the 49ers and the challenge of taking them on at Santa Clara? It's the next game for us, uh, John. Uh, they're a playoff. They're still in contentions for the playoff. It's another playoff caliber football team that we're playing. Uh, Kyle Shanahan has done a heck of a job out there with that franchise. And, and uh, you know, obviously Jimmy's been around. Uh, he's a Super Bowl uh, uh, quarterback. Uh, you know, and, and that's a good football team, and it's going to be a big challenge for us, just like they all are at this time. Does it give you a lot of confidence, though, knowing that you won your last two road games? Uh, you beat Tennessee, you beat Jacksonville. Obviously, uh, tough conditions in both those situations. I don't know what it's going to be like on Sunday in Northern California, but thoughts on that, Coach, being able to build confidence on the road. Winning, winning, winning does that to you, Mark. I mean, you know, you, you obviously, as I said this before, sometimes when you win a football games, you look at it and you probably wasn't quite as good as you thought mm -hmm. you were. But, you know, there's a lot of things that you go see that you need to be corrected. And we just got to make sure we don't get blinded by that and understand that we got to keep getting better. There's things that we can do to get better. Uh, we, we still got to uh, eliminate. We had way too many penalties in that game. 
And we're very fortunate to overcome that. Uh, we had nine penalties, 10 penalties maybe. That's way too many. And uh, a lot of those penalties, we got to be able to eliminate their pre-snap penalties, which we said all along we can do. Early in the year, those things were, were killing us. Uh, we got away with it because we had a little bit more consistency, offensive, defensive, and special teams. But the one thing that we've got to do is just make sure that we be, we play penalty-free and be able to just go out and play and, and understand that do what we do best. The opponent is irrelevant. It's the fact that we do what we do best. And I think this football team is starting to do that right now. Coach, I know you love wins no matter how you get them, where you get them, all that. But Mark brought up a great point. You want to last two on the road. And there's something about getting a win on the road. It, I, I, there's something really cool about it. What, what's the difference in winning on the road versus winning at home? When you're on the road, you, we don't have those great fans we have here at, at uh, NRG Stadium. When you're on the road, it's just you and the team for the most part. We, there, there's a few Texans that out there that we, we recognize and we see. But usually yeah. when you're away, it's, it's kind of like it's all about you. It's all about the team. It's all about you staying together. It's all about you understanding that when adversity comes, that you don't have that crowd to get you back in it, that it, it becomes you've been able to overcome those kind of things and stay the course. And uh, the last two ball games on the road, we've been able to do that. Coach, take us through a Monday and what you guys do on a Monday. Win or lose, you got to get ready for next week. So how do you digest what just occurred in the previous game and then usher in the coming week and the next week's opponent? Well, the first thing we do is we come in and we we look at the video offensively, defensively, special teams and evaluate and grade it. And then we, we sit and we all talk about it as a staff, the things that we need to do to get better. Uh, moving forward, uh, make sure we get all the mistakes uh, taken care of. And uh, uh, after we do that, uh, uh, normally our players are in, but we have what we call Victory Monday today. Those players aren't coming in. They come in and do the lift uh, and get their training in uh, from a standpoint of the injuries. And then when it, when, uh, then we start, we start looking right till San Francisco at this point right now, start game planning for them and getting ready and making sure that uh, – uh, we got a good plan moving forward. But and then on Tuesday, we kind of do the same thing. We spend all day Tuesday game plan and making sure that uh, we know exactly what we want. We get a scouting report on them and uh, then we take it from there and then we keep moving forward. Coach, over the years, have you become a more lenient grader than you were <laughs> earlier in your career? Oh, no, as a head coach, I'll tell you what, I'm as hard as you've ever been right now. Was, uh, <laughs> believe me, I can hey, I, I can remember when I was an assistant coach and getting grades. I'll tell you what, it was always that you always wanted to make sure that now do I grade him too hard? I grade him too easy. And here's the thing is after wins, you, you're not lenient, but you're a little bit more apt yeah. to, you know, kind of give them a break here. But when you lose, there are things that they do pretty good that you probably say we lost, man. So shoot, I'm going the other way with it right here. <laughs> we didn't do it with it. So as as a head coach, I, I'm kind of I'm kind of hey, look, I understand what our coaches go through. I do understand it, but at this position right now that I'm in, hey, listen, I'm looking at it from from clear eyes, looking at it from the way it is, and basically, uh, you know, we just want to get it done and get it right. But it seems like you don't overcomplicate it because everything you've been saying has come true, right? If you stay ahead of the marker, if you don't turn the ball over, if you limit the big play, if you cut down on penalties, that's a winning recipe right there. Mark, and that's a winning recipe for any football team in this league. And when you go out and you execute that and you go by that plan, you're going to have a chance to win most ball games that you're in. And we've been very fortunate that uh, we did that. Uh, we've done that the last two ball games, and hopefully we continue to do that moving forward. You know, here's another thing about getting ready for the week, because very often after a game, you kind of know who got hurt and who might not be available. But now every week it's it's kind of roulette, isn't it, Coach? I mean, you it know, is. What number is going to land today? You Mark, know. You're, you're exactly right. But you know what, though? Whoever it is, we know right now those guys are going to step up. They're going to go out there and they're going to play Texan football and they're going to do the best that they can do. And that's all we can ask them to do. And they've done a tremendous job of doing that for us. And that's how we'll approach it moving forward. I don't know who will be at practice on Wednesday, but whoever's <laughs> at practice on Wednesday, we're going to go in and practice and we're going to get it done. Wow. Yeah. Co go ahead, Johnny. Go ahead, Mark. Go ahead, Mark. All right. Ask Coach Amagey Bank question of the week. And, uh, you know, it's funny because uh, Bill Belichick was asked about this post game after a loss, so it did not go well. But New Year's resolutions, coach, 
Uh, do you ever make New Year's resolutions? How do you approach that kind of thing? The, the flipping of the calendar? Because you live a football life. I imagine your calendar is season to season. Hey, listen, Mark, today is Monday. Today is Monday for us on a football week. And let me tell you something. I'm not going any further than Monday of this football week right now. Mm -hmm. uh, when's the last time? How do you how do you handle New Year's Eve if you're able to be home and spend a little time with the family? Do you wait till midnight and watch the ball drop on TV? Or is it just like I'm going to bed? I got to rest because I've got a season to take. Care hey, listen, of. my rest is more important. I've seen that drop by ball drop so many times. I'm tired of seeing that ball drop. Yes. Hey, listen, I'll be sleep. I'll be getting my rest, waking up the next day, knowing that it's 2022, ready to roll. All right. Well, Coach, thanks a lot for joining us. We appreciate it. You're welcome, Mark and John. Appreciate it.